Five Nights at Freddy's fan games. There are a lot of them out there, from Pop Goes to the Joy of Creation to whatever the fuck this is. There are a lot of them, and many of which I just don't like playing. But every now and again, there's a fan game that gets released that I really enjoy, and today we're playing one of those, and that's of course, Five Nights at Candy's. But as many of you know, I'm addicted to meth. Or, er, no, not that. But as many of you know, I'm addicted to making somewhat easy games extremely difficult. So in today's video, we're going to be seeing if I can complete Five Nights at Candy's without ever using the cameras. That's right, literally one of the most important things in the entire game. It's what I use to track the animatronics to make sure I don't die, and guess what? I can't use it. And that is it. There's only two rules to this challenge, complete the entirety of Five Nights at Candy's, and never use my camera system under any circumstances. Also, one quick thing I do want to say before this video starts, this challenge was filmed on the remastered version of the first game. It is the exact same, but retextured and looks way better. And now, with all that said, let's get straight into the video. Before we start the actual challenge, I'm just going to quickly explain how this game works for anybody who hasn't seen it or played it before. Much like every other FNAF game, we have our ass cheeks glued to the floor and aren't allowed to move from our office. And all we have to do is survive from 12am to 6am from the 7 killer animatronics who are trying to rip my ass off of the floor. Overall, the gameplay is very similar to Five Nights at Freddy's 1, except for 3 main differences. Our cameras use a night vision mode to actually see what's going on, but, you know, that doesn't matter, because we're not using the cameras. The second difference is, instead of just having two doors to the left and right of us, we also have a third door covering the ticket booth window, which is right in front of us. And the third and final difference is, we do not have any door lights, and if you're wondering how that's gonna work, just, you know, wait a little bit. So if you've seen my videos before, that intro card probably looked a little bit weird because I usually have the animatronics AI values there, but I don't know those. It's just not public information. I went through the entire Five Nights at Candy's Reddit page as well as googling everything I could, but I found absolutely nothing about the game's AI. So why not contact the game's developer? I, I did, and he didn't, he didn't answer. Me. But that's fine. I don't need his help anyways, I'll just make it up. In this night, there are only two animatronics, and those are Candy the Cat and Cindy the Cat, and the two of them are very similar to Bonnie and Chica from Five Nights at Freddy's 1. When the night starts off, both Candy and Cindy will start off at Camera 1, which is known as the Show Stage. And from there, they'll move around in this area until they decide it's time for me to die. When they do that, Cindy can only move down the right hallway, which is near camera 4, but Candy can move down both the right hallway and the left hallway, which is near camera 6. But the funny thing about this night is, both Candy and Cindy will not move until 3am. So we just sit in the office and don't move for half the night, and with nights lasting for 7 minutes, that means we're sitting still for 3 minutes and 30 seconds. When they do move around, I'm just gonna assume they use the exact same AI as the other animatronics in the Five Nights at Freddy's series. This means that every few seconds, usually around 4-5 to five seconds, the code will run what is known as a movement opportunity. During one of these movement opportunities, the game generates a random number between 1 and 20 and compares that number to the animatronics AI value in that night. For those who don't know what an AI value is, it's just a specialized number given to each individual animatronic, and it relates to how difficult they will be in that night. So whenever an animatronic has a movement opportunity, that randomly generated number will be compared to their specific AI value. If the randomly generated number is lower than the animatronic's AI value, then they'll move to the next position in their path, but if it isn't, then they're going to stay where they are. So, for example, if the randomly generated number is something like 7, and the animatronic has a really high AI value like 15, 7 is obviously less than 15, so the animatronic is gonna move. But if the AI value is a really small number like 2, 2 is obviously not greater than 7, so the animatronic will not move. And hopefully that's how these animatronics work. Again, I have absolutely no way of getting this information, so I'm just guessing. But with all that said, now's probably a good time to actually start talking about the challenge itself, and why this night is extremely easy. 
So when an animatronic makes it to our door, they won't instantly kill us. This actually acts as another position in their path and they need to have another successful movement opportunity to actually kill us. When an animatronic makes it to this door position, in a regular FNAF game, they can usually be seen by using some light system. But if you remember, in this game, we don't have any lights, so how are we going to know that they're at our door position? Luckily for us, these animatronics have some FNAF movie stoner eyeballs, and we're able to see them in the dark. Which means if either Candy or Cindy make it to the door position, we'll see their eyes glowing in the darkness and we can instantly slam the door in their face. So yeah, for the first half of this night, we're sitting still because they don't move, and for the second half, all we have to do is look at the doorways and if we see their eyes, we just close the doors. So guess what? I don't even need a fucking camera system. This night's too easy, and believe me, I'm not complaining. Why are the f subtitles at the top? By on the of Do I look blind to you? you didn't have to cut me off. So nothing happens till 3 a.m. So we're just not gonna do anything. Well, good thing I'm doing f neither of those. Was that the bite of 87? Oh, f Ah! What if I just- Oh. Whoa! So yeah, night one is not very interesting, but night two is the exact same. In this night, we still use the exact same strategy, but now we have two new animatronics to worry about, Chester the Chimpanzee and the Penguin. So I could be talking about my super cool look left and look right strategy, or I could talk about this guy, and I'd much rather do that. The first of these animatronics I want to talk about is the Penguin, because he is stupidly easy to deal with. First, the penguin spawns on camera 12 and will move towards the player taking this path through the establishment. He moves from cam 12 to cam 2, then to cam 3, then to cam 4, and finally to our right door. And again, assuming he has the exact same AI as the Five Nights at Freddy's 1 animatronics, he's gonna use the same movement opportunities. So he's given an AI value for this night, and every few seconds a random number from 1 to 20 is created, and if that number is smaller than his AI value, he's gonna move. And whenever he has a successful movement opportunity, he moves to the next camera in the path that he takes to our office. And obviously, if he fails this movement opportunity, he's not gonna move, and he's just gonna stand there. But here comes the important part, if he manages to make it to our door and we don't close it in time, he'll get into our office, but he won't actually jump scare us. All he does is sit underneath our desk and randomly open and close the three doors we have, and he also says this voice line a lot. Can I take your order? So basically, he's a lot like Balloon Boy from Five Nights at Freddy's 2, he's just annoying as f- he can get us killed if he opens a door at the wrong time and lets an animatronic in, but that doesn't happen that often. And also, if you're wondering, when the penguin makes it to the door position and is about to enter our office, we can also see his eyes light up in the doorway, just like Candy and Cindy. Although, the penguin animatronic is not that important. Is he a penguin wearing a suit? Yes. Is that cool? Yes. Does he matter to the challenge? No. But do you want to know who does matter? The banjo monkey guy. You know, his name's Chester, but that, that doesn't matter. First off, Chester will spawn behind the curtains in camera 9. And from there, he'll move out into the middle of camera 9, then cam 8, then cam 7, and finally cam 6, and he'll be at our left door. Again, I'm assuming he uses the exact same AI to move as all the other three animatronics, because he is very similar to them. Although, in these earlier nights, he's a lot more aggressive than the other three, so I'm gonna assume his AI value is a little bit higher than theirs. In this night, Cindy and the Penguin's AI value is probably around 2, Candy's is probably around 3, and Chester's is probably around 4. But again, this is just me speculating, I have absolutely no way to know that this is true, so I'm just assuming. 
Once Chester has five successful movement opportunities, he's gonna be at camera six, which is our left door, and just like the other three animatronics we've talked about, we can see his eyes glowing in the doorway. This again lets us know that we need to close the door for a few seconds to get rid of him, however, if we don't do this and he makes it inside of our office, unlike the penguin, he will actually kill us. But as long as we notice his eyes in the doorway before he has another movement opportunity, then we should be perfectly fine. And it's as simple as that. My strategy for this night is to just give myself motion sickness and break every vertebrae in my neck by looking left and right repeatedly. And that's it. That's all we do for seven minutes straight. Um, the, the next nights are gonna be harder. One tried to reach their hand in my ass. No f sh The other ones are broken. Why would they do anything? This night might take the cake for the most entertaining. We're lucky that ha animatronic's hand is in my anus because now there's a cup on my desk. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. Ah, that's what's with them. Woohoo! Time for another quirky, fun cutscene. Okay, somebody just put a kid in a meat grinder. Oh, yep, I was right. Night three is where this challenge starts to get actually difficult. In addition to the four animatronics we already have, there are two new animatronics that are added, and both of them are extremely annoying. However, one of the new animatronics has an extremely rare chance of actually spawning in this night, so I'm not going to be talking about him now. The new animatronic added in this night is Jeff Bezos. Or his actual name, Blank the Animatronic. But that's boring, so I'm going to call him Jeff Bezos. I'm just kidding. Blank the Animatronic acts as this game's version of Foxy from Five Nights at Freddy's 1. So, simply put, he spawns on a camera and slowly moves through attack stages until he reaches his final attack stage and teleports to our office. So, again, I'm gonna assume that he uses the exact same AI that Foxy does. First off, he's gonna spawn in the drawing room, which is camera 11. And just like every other animatronic, every 4 to 5 seconds, he's gonna have a movement opportunity. But if that movement opportunity is successful, he won't actually move from camera 11. Instead, he'll just move into his next attack phase, and what is an attack phase? Well, I'll tell you. In total, he has four different attack phases. The first one is the one that he spawns in, and it's where he's staring at the floor. The second phase is where he's staring at the camera, the third phase is where he's standing in the middle of the room, and the fourth phase is where he's left the room. And as I've mentioned, whenever he has a successful movement opportunity, he's just going to move into the next phase. So if he's in phase 2, then has a successful movement opportunity, he's going to be in phase 3. But none of these attack phases really matter except for the fourth one, because upon reaching the fourth phase, he'll instantly be teleported to camera 5, which is right outside of our ticket booth window. And as you can guess, if we don't close that door in time, he's going to crank the f soldier boy and smash through the glass and assault us. This is a kid's restaurant, what's going on? All of that seems pretty simple, right? He's just like Foxy, but when you remember that we can't use the cameras, there are a lot of problems with that. Like, a lot. Starting off with the obvious one, we can't tell what phase he's in or know if he's attacking because we can't look at the cameras. And also, if his AI works literally the exact same as Foxy's, we would use the cameras to watch over him and delay his movement opportunities. But of course, that's not allowed. So, what exactly can we do? Uh, nothing. There are no sound effects that let us know he's moved to the next attack phase, and there's also no sound effects that let us know he's teleported to camera 5. Literally, the only sound effect that has anything to do with him is the sound that plays when he smashes through our f window and kills us. So, for this night, I just invented a really, really bad strategy that's only gonna work for this night, and I'll make a better one later. For this night, I'm gonna assume that Blank has an AI value of either 3 or 4, and going on the high end of that, we'll say he has an AI value of 4. So that means every single time he has a movement opportunity, there is a 20% or 1 in 5 chance that he has a successful movement opportunity. And if we get average RNG, that means it will take him 20 movement opportunities to make it all the way to our office. 
Also, assuming these movement opportunities occur every 5 seconds, that means it's gonna take him 100 seconds to get to our office, or 1 minute and 40 seconds. So what all of that means is, we are going to sit in our office and do our regular side to side strategy and wait for 1 minute and 40 seconds. Once that passes, we're gonna close the door to our ticket booth window and wait for him to attack and play this sound effect. When we hear that, that means he's tried to attack us and failed, and now he's back to his first attack phase. So, we are again gonna wait the 1 minute and 40 seconds and do everything we just did all over again. And if we constantly get average RNG all the time, then we should be perfectly fine. However, that doesn't happen all the time. Listen, I told you the strategy was gonna be sh and I didn't lie. But for this night, it works. For the next night, it's not gonna work at all. Here's the plan. I am going to die. When I say ridiculously speedy, I mean extremely cheesy. It, both my doors closed at like 5 a.m. or something like No! Oh my god! No! Keep that closed, you know, to deter any burglars or something. Oh! Haha! <laughs> I don't like how nothing. Okay. I was gonna say, I don't like, okay, now I don't, I, I take it back, I take it back. Okay. Ooh. We're probably fine. We were fine. I still don't know what that is, that's a robot. But why is the robot wearing scuba gear? Am I gonna turn the other way? and he's gonna be closer to me. So, remember in Night 3 when I talked about there being two new animatronics, but I would talk about the other one later? Yeah. The new animatronic in this night is Old Candy, and luckily for us, he doesn't add any new mechanics that we haven't seen already. In fact, he's actually very similar to Chester the Chimpanzee. So again, every 4-5 to five seconds he has a movement opportunity, if that's successful, he moves to the next position in his path towards our office. When he spawns, he's gonna first appear in the parts and service room, which is camera 10, then he's gonna move into camera 9, then camera 8, then camera 7, then camera 6, and then he will be at our left door. So yeah, he's pretty simple. He has the exact same AI as pretty much every other animatronic. But I told you this night was going to be difficult, and that's for one reason. When Old Candy makes it to our doorway, we cannot see his eyes. Unlike every other animatronic we've seen, you know, except for Blank, we have virtually no way of telling that he's made it to our door. Although, supposedly, according to the official Five Nights at Candy's wiki page, there's actually two different ways to tell that he's at our door. Here's the first one. Apparently, the only way to see if Old Candy is at the door is by looking extremely closely. If he is there, there is a hint of blue that you might be able to see. So, to test this, we're gonna play a quick game. I'm gonna show you two screenshots, one where Old Candy is at the door and one where he isn't, and your job is to identify which screenshot shows him at the door. On your left is screenshot number one, and on your right is screenshot number two. Can you tell the difference? Oh, you don't see a difference? Here, I'll even brighten up the images by 100% to make it easier. Alright, do you have your guess? Well, the screenshot where he is at the door is screenshot number one. If you got that right, you're really good at guessing because there's literally no f difference. But hey, that doesn't really matter because there's still the second way for us to tell that he's at our door, right? The wiki says, without the cameras, the player can tell if he's at the door by listening for a mild humming sound. So, you already know what's happening. To test this, I'm gonna play two clips at maximum volume, one where he's at the door and one where he isn't, and your job is to guess which clip is him at the door. Here is clip number one. And here is clip number two. So, can you even hear a difference between the two clips? I really don't care because there is none. The clip where he is actually at the door is clip 1, and yes, that is the real audio for both clips. There is just no difference. And that's just great because now we have two animatronics which spawn at two different doors and we have absolutely zero way of tracking them at all. 
So guess what? Now it's time to make another really sh strategy that only works for this night until I'm forced to make a better one. If I'm being completely honest, the strategy we used in this night is basically just an updated version of the strategy we used last night. So we're still closing the door and waiting for Blank to attack, but unlike last night where we waited a minute and 40 seconds then closed the door, now we're gonna wait about a minute and 30 seconds. And as for how we're gonna deal with old candy, we're basically gonna do the exact same thing. During this night, I did start to create an extremely overpowered strategy, however, I'm gonna be talking about that when it becomes more important. But during this night, unfortunately, I can't just keep the left door closed because it takes way too much power. Although, I can keep it closed for a decent amount of time. During the end of night 3, I had around 60% remaining, and that was after I kept that door closed for way longer than I should have. So, realistically, if I used night 3's strategy properly, I probably could have ended the night with around 75%, meaning in night 4, I basically have 75% power just to use on the left door. The problem is, I can't just close the door, wait for a knocking sound to let me know he's attacked, then open the door like I did for Blank, because now there's three different animatronics coming down the left hallway. So if I had the left door closed and Chester attacked and knocked on the door, then I would open it up. But the problem is, Old Candy could also be at that door, and I have no way to tell, so I'm dead. So instead, I settled for a more repetitive strategy. First, I would close my left door, then move over to my right door and check if there was any animatronics there. Obviously, if there was one there, I would close the door, but if there wasn't, I would just move back to the left door and open it up. And from here, I would do the exact same thing. Move over to the right door, check for animatronics, then move back to the left door, but this time, I would close it. And then, I would just do the exact same thing. Close the left door, check the right door, open the left door, and check the right door. Also, while I'm doing this, I'm still waiting the minute and 30 seconds to close the ticket booth window to save me from blank. But surprisingly, this actually worked first try, and I ended up beating night 4 with around 30% remaining, which is great, although it's definitely not going to work for night 5 because it gets worse. I had it closed. Okay, I lied about it being first attempt. It was second attempt. Shut up. I really- Fuck off! Okay, thank you. Thank you. I don't actually know how much I need that closed as well, which is big problem. Nice. Oh, that's so clean, dude. That's so clean. <laughs> Ah. Oh. There you go. Nice job. Ah! Nice. 31%? Oh, that's pretty good. Oh, I wonder what we're gonna see now. Woo! I hope it's not two animatronics. Just like every other night, Night 5 introduces another new animatronic, this time it's the final animatronic of the game. And would you believe it, this animatronic is literally the hardest and worst animatronic for this challenge. However, in Night 5, there's actually a really rare chance for this animatronic to appear, so most of the time we never actually see it. But instead of talking about it next night, I'm just gonna talk about it now. The new animatronic that gets added in this night is the rat. That's it. It's... It's just the rat. First off, as I've mentioned, in Night 5, it's very rare for him to actually kill us, and that's because he becomes active after 4am, so most of the time, he doesn't even reach our office. But on the off chance that he actually does make it to our office, that is very bad, because as you can guess, we can't see his eyes. But another thing is, he can go to either door. So basically, just imagine Candy the Cat, but on steroids, and we can't see his eyes. That's, that's what the rat does. When it hits 4am, he will first spawn at camera 9, and this is the same camera he spawns at for every other night. From here, he can move to literally whatever camera he wants, except for cam 1, 10, 11, and 12. When he moves from cam 9, he's gonna move down to cam 8, and from cam 8, he can either move down to cam 2, or he can move down to cam 7. 
If he moves to cam 7, he's automatically going to move down to cam 6 and attack, but if he goes to cam 2, he can either move to cam 3 or to cam 5. If he moves to cam 3, he will automatically move down the right hallway and go to cam 4 to attack us. But if he moves to cam 5, he'll either move to cam 4 and attack down the right hallway or cam 7 and attack down the left hallway. I know that sounded extremely confusing, because it is, but all you really need to know is that he can attack at the left door or the right door. Although, there is one really good thing about this. No, there's not. I, I lied. When we go to the wiki, it doesn't even give us one of those bullshit ways to get rid of him that doesn't work. It just tells us, good luck. So now, all three of our office doors have an animatronic that can appear there, and each of these animatronics have no sound effects to let us know they're there, and no visual effects to let us know they're there either. In other words, we're screwed. We finished last night with only 31% remaining, and now, in this night, we have a whole nother door that we have to worry about. Basically, we only have 33% for each of our doors, which means our previous strategy is not gonna work. But guess what? Currently, that's just not my fucking problem. As I've said a few times, the rat has an extremely rare chance to actually kill us, so in this night, I'm just gonna act like he's not there. If he somehow makes it to my office and kills me, so what? I'll just redo the night and hope that he doesn't do it again. Obviously, just like last night, I do need to change the strategy up a little bit just to compensate for the increase in animatronic AI values. So this means checking the left and right door a lot more than I was in the last night. And also, unlike last night where I was waiting a minute and 30 seconds to close the ticket booth window, in this night I'm gonna wait about a minute and 15 seconds, which is around the same time that the clock changes from 12am to 1am. Due to the rat being irrelevant in this night, night 5 is basically just a slightly harder version of night 4, so to be completely honest, it's not that bad. <laughs> I'm gonna run an attempt where I just have that closed constantly. Actually, no, that's a bad idea. What? <laughs> there is no humming noise! I just sh in my pants because it's good, like sh and I, I, it's also really f loud. Holy f Jesus Christ! Okay, why the fuck is the dude not attacked yet? Oh, oh my God! Okay, why the fuck is the dude not attacked? Yeah. <laughs> oh! <laughs> I kind of just want to keep that closed until he attacks. Ah. Uh. Oh, like that. Okay, never mind. Now I'm keeping it open. Fuck that. Now we can just chill. I feel like. Yes, sir. I wonder what we're gonna see this time. Whoa, two homies. Oh, three homies. Yeah, I know I made a mistake. It's three homies. My bad. Fuck you. The next night's gonna suck massive balls. Alright, night six, as I've said, is just a harder version of night five. There's no new animatronics, no new mechanics, it's just a little bit more difficult. So, now it's time to talk about the OP strategy, the strategy that actually makes this challenge possible. Because if it weren't for this strategy, the old strategy would definitely not work now that Rat spawns at 12am. But before I explain how we actually do this strategy, we need to understand one key feature of this game, power. As you can guess, the power is pretty simple, it's the exact same as Five Nights at Freddy's 1. 
So we start off the night with 100% power, and if we use it all up, the three doors we have will instantly be forced open, and that basically means we're dead. And as for how we actually lose power, there's three different ways that that can happen. The first way we lose power is by just existing. If we do absolutely nothing, we will lose about 1% of power every 1 minute and 30 seconds. This means by the end of the night, we'll lose about 5% of power for doing nothing. But it's such a small amount of power that we actually lose, so I don't really care about it that much. The second way we can lose power is by using our camera system, but the entire point of the challenge is to not do that, so it doesn't matter. The third and final way we can lose power is by closing any of the three doors we have. However, when we close any door in this game, the power we lose is not the exact same as in Five Nights at Freddy's 1. In FNAF 1, you lose a constant amount of power when you close the door, 0.235% every second. But in this game, when we close a door, we lose power exponentially. This basically means the longer we keep the door closed, the more power we're gonna lose, and the way we tell how much power we're losing is by looking at the door buttons. Here are all five stages that the buttons can be in. As you can guess, the more lights that are on means the more power we are using. Again, I don't know the rates at which power is lost at each stage, because guess what? That's not public information. But I do know one thing, when we close the door, it will take exactly four seconds to move to the next stage of power loss. This means that from stage 1 to stage 5, it will take exactly 20 seconds to reach max power loss. So, now we know all about power, but how exactly does that yapping session help us beat night 6? Well, you already know. The OP strategy. The OP strategy exploits the exponential power loss that we just talked about. Basically, when we start the night, we want to instantly close all three doors, and what we do from here is very simple. All we have to do is watch each door and make sure they don't go past stage 3 of power loss. If we see one of the doors enter stage 3, we're gonna open it up and wait for it to reset to stage 1 and then close it again. And that's all we have to do. Close the door, wait for it to enter stage 3, open the door, wait a few seconds, and then close it again. By doing this, all three of our doors stay closed for basically the entire night, however we lose way less power because none of the doors enter stage 5. Each door only reaches a max of stage 3, meaning the rate at which we lose power on each door is way less than it would be if we just closed the door and left it. And that's it. That is the OP strategy that I've been hyping up this entire time. I know it sounds lame, because it is. But it's literally the perfect strategy for this challenge. It allows us to have our doors closed for the max amount of time possible while having us not run out of power before the end of the night. Obviously, this strategy isn't flawless, animatronics can still attack me when I have the doors open to reset them, but the odds of this actually happening are really really low. So by utilizing this OP strategy properly, I was able to beat night 6 of this challenge with 20% remaining. If you can't tell by how I said 20% remaining, that that's really good. Alright look. Sixth night, we got the rat. The rat's up my a- Jesus f Christ. Holy f sh I just defecated my pants. What the f <laughs> Holy f Uh, 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 uh. How was I not three o'clock yet? What the fuck? Oh, close this. Close this. Open this. No! God damn! I was about to close it. You fuck piece of shit. You piece of shit. I was doing so good. Fuck you. We got the strategy down. It's called have a seizure. Nah, he's going crazy tonight. That's crazy. Because I can. I mean, I'm above 50% and already at 3. So it's like...
Are you f kidding me? Holy f Christ! Whoa! Holy f shit! Holy sh! Should I just keep that closed for the rest of tonight? I think so. I'm gonna keep that closed. I'm just sending it full send. Oh, no mind. <laughs> Holy sh! Dude, the full send, the calls are so legit, bro. Nice! 20%? Are you joking me, bro? Come on. The homies. Hey, you didn't tell me we were having a homie party. And you didn't invite me? Fuck you. What? You gonna do something about it? Nope, he's, he's dipping. <laughs> You just slapped me! What the fuck? So now, I mean, there's really only one other thing to do. Oh yeah, every time I do a Five Nights at Freddy's challenge, there is always somebody that goes into the comments and says, Oh, well it didn't count because you didn't do the custom night. Well, guess what I'm doing right now? That's right, welcome to 720 mode. In every night leading up to this one, as I've made very clear, I do not know what the AI values for any of the animatronics are, but in this night, I finally know every single one of them. The idea of the custom night is actually pretty simple. All it does is gives the player the ability to select each animatronics AI value, whereas in previous nights they were determined by the developer. And the challenge we're trying to complete right now is beating the night with all 7 animatronics having the hardest AI values possible of 20. So this obviously sounds really difficult to do, but why is it actually that hard? By now, you hopefully know what a movement opportunity is. It occurs every few seconds, and it's a comparison between the animatronics AI value and a randomly generated number. But if you remember, that randomly generated number can only range from 1 to 20. And since every animatronic's AI value is 20, whenever there's a movement opportunity, the AI value will always be greater than or equal to the randomly generated number. So essentially, whenever there's a movement opportunity, every single animatronic will instantly move every single time. And if we're right about a movement opportunity occurring every 4-5 to five seconds, that means every single animatronic is gonna move on average 94 times. What the fuck? So yeah, needless to say, this is this is a really bad idea. More specifically, Candy will take five movement opportunities to make it all the way to our office and kill us from our right door and five from our left door. Cindy will take five, the penguin will take four, Chester will take six, Blank will take three, Old Candy will take five, and Rat will take four for the left door and four for the right door. And if these movement opportunities occur every 4.5 seconds, which they seem to do when you actually play the game, both Candy and Cindy will take 22.5 seconds to kill us, the Penguin will take 18 seconds, Chester will take 27 seconds, Blank will take 9 seconds, Old Candy will take 22.5 seconds, and the Rat will take 18 seconds. So, does any of this information actually help us beat the knight, like making a strategy or something? No, but it is cool. So, what exactly are we gonna do to beat this knight? It sounds impossible to do normally, so how are we gonna do it without cameras? I feel like you can probably guess. Actually, you know what? Go down in the comments right now and put in your guess. Don't skip forward in the video. Go down to the comments and guess. I'll give you some time. Just guess. Don't, like, edit your comment after. Guess what we're gonna do, and then I'll tell you in a bit. Okay, that's enough time. The OP strategy. The OP strategy is the single greatest thing to happen in this challenge. So if you really thought I was going to change it up and do something else, I'm sorry to say this, but you're stupid. We are literally going to do the exact same strategy we did last night, but in this night. The only change is going to be maybe closing the doors a little bit faster than I did usually. But other than that, it's basically the exact same night, except every animatronic is on cocaine. I just want to see how long it takes for him to attack. <sighs> no. 
No, I was about to click it. I was literally about to go right then. Jeez, that was like nine. All right, sorry to pause the super intense gameplay, but the thing that's about to happen next is literally the most insane thing I've ever seen in my life. I don't know if it was a glitch or single-handedly the luckiest thing I've ever experienced, but whatever it is, it's insane. So just so you know, this footage is 100% real and I'm going to show the completely uncut footage just so you know how crazy this actually is. No! Oh my god, dude, what a fumble. No way, man. What is happening? I've taken off my headphones. <laughs> what? 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 Are you kidding me? What? Bro. <laughs> what was that? Oh my god. Oh my god. That might have been the most luckiest thing I have ever seen in my entire life. What was that? Oh my god, dude. That's gotta be like a world record or something. I finished that sh with 29% or something? 25%? What the f was that? Oh my god. Are you kidding me? What the f? Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. I have absolutely no idea how that happened. Initially, I thought it was like a FNAF 1 power out situation where every few seconds Freddy has the chance to kill you and sometimes he does and sometimes he doesn't. But then I tested it and every single attempt I died exactly 10 seconds after blank broke my window. So needless to say, I have no f***ing idea what happened, but am I complaining about it? F*** no. So yeah, I got extremely lucky to actually beat this night, but guess what? We're still not done with the game. This night is known as Night Null, however, in the game, it looks like that. But basically, Night Null is a secret night that's only available in the remastered version of this game. The way you start this night is really tedious, so guess what? We're gonna speedrun it. Go into the extras menu, select the rat, zoom in on the rat, wait a little bit, a code should appear, input that code into the custom night menu, start the night, and then open the cameras. Oh, f So yeah, the night is actually impossible to even start without using the cameras, but let's just act like we don't have to and actually try out the night. After opening up the cameras, if we look at cam 1 with the night vision, we will see Shadow Candy, and once we do that, all we have to do is close the cameras and we'll be jump scared and teleported to Night Null. So now that we've figured out how to actually unlock Night Null, what actually is it? This night is completely different from every other night we've seen so far. First off, there's only one animatronic, and that's Shadow Candy. It's candy, but purple. Shadow Candy will first spawn at a hidden camera known as Camera 13. And from there, once he has a successful movement opportunity, he will instantly teleport directly to one of our three doors. If we're able to find him on one of the cameras, we can stare at him and make him reset back to Cam 13. However, we can't use the cameras, so that doesn't matter. 
When he makes it to our door, he doesn't actually show his eyes like original Candy. What he does instead is he plays a one second long attack animation that gets paired up with this sound effect. And here's where the second weird thing happens in this night. If he teleports to our door and we don't close it in time, he's gonna jump scare us, but it won't actually end our night. Instead, we're gonna lose 6 total percentage, and our clock is also gonna be ticked back by 1 hour. So, if we were at 96% at 1am and got jump scared, we would now be at 90% at 12am. There is a way to revert this power and time loss, however, it requires us to use the cameras, so obviously we're not gonna do it. So, you might be wondering, if we can't die to Shadow Candy's jump scare, then how do we even lose this night? Well, the way we lose this is by running out of power. Okay, well that sounds pretty easy. All we have to do is wait for him to attack, close whatever door he's at, and then just try our best not to get jump scared. No. As I've said, when we get jump scared by Shadow Candy, we lose power, but the problem is, when we block his attack with our door, we also lose power. But that doesn't even matter, let's just reset him back to camera 13 every time so he never actually makes it to our door. Oh fuck. that requires the cameras. Yeah, this is gonna be a lot harder than I thought. Alright, if we're gonna beat this knight, we need to figure out one very important thing. How does Shadow Candy move? Like I said, he first spawns at camera 13 and then teleports to a bunch of different cameras until he has a successful movement opportunity, then he'll teleport to one of our three doors. The problem with this is, the movement opportunity just seems to be whenever he wants. Take these two clips for example, I start the timer at the very beginning of the night in both clips, and in one of them, I get jump scared at about 29 seconds, and in the other, I get jump scared at about 37 seconds. So basically, what I'm trying to say is, he just does whatever the f*** he wants. And that's great, now that we know his movement opportunities, we only have one other problem to talk about. Power. When we get jump scared, we lose 6% power, we already knew that, and what we also know is, when we block his attack with one of our doors, we also lose power, but what we didn't know is, when we block the door, it isn't the same amount of power every single time. That's right baby, it's RNG. If we block him with the door, Shadow Candy has the chance to knock on the door twice while taking 2% each knock, meaning 4 total percent. Or, instead of that, he could knock 3 times and take 6 total percent, or even better than that, he could knock 4 times and take 8 percent. More specifically, based on my really sh testing, because guess what? This is also not public information. He'll take 4 percent power 35 percent of the time, 6 percent power 62.5 percent of the time, and 8 percent power 2.5 percent of the time. And that's basically all I have to say about this knight. Now all we have to do is make an actual strategy to beat it. However, there's a lot of problems with this. The whole point of this knight is to use the cameras and reset him to make sure he never actually makes it to our door so we have enough power. But I can't do that. So as for what we're gonna do for the strategy, nothing. Over time, I started to develop a strategy that was somewhat working, but still, after hours and hours and hours of attempts, I only got within 30 seconds of beating the knight. This is because, by the end of the night, he's gonna attack 19 times, and to even have a chance to win, we need almost all of those to be the 4% power loss. Even if every single time we blocked the attack, he only took 4%, we would only have 24% to use on the doors. And also, to make it worse, we can't get jump scared a single time throughout the entire night or else we'll be pushed back an hour and the night will be impossible. So yeah, starting the night is impossible, beating the night is impossible, it's just f***ing impossible. But guess what, I still have some really funny moments from me trying to beat this night. Open the game, boom. Gotta, oh, gotcha, to get, I closed that, what the f***? Oh, ha, 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 ha. Five Nights at Candy's Remastered. The game contains flashing lights. If you don't, don't flash somebody. What the fuck? What? Bro, what is this f trash, bro? Seventeen.
maybe. So after the beep, after the beep, we'll, we'll go after the beep, okay? After the beep, we'll go. Oh my, oh my, four? Four? Look, risk it for the biscuit. If you don't get the biscuit, you're fucked. You know what I'm saying? So that's like 13, so we'll go 14. We'll go 14. We'll go 14! Not like EDP. I'm not. I don't. I don't know if I'm gonna explain this in the video, but if you're just listening to me make up numbers, I'm sorry. 18 and a half. We'll call it 18 and a half. A f quarter. If I go anything past a half, I'm done. No! I closed the door. On you. I called it 12, so I'll call it 14. We all know how much I love. No. No! I. F I actually fumbled it. Uh, I have absolutely positively no f clue. Hello? Yay. Stop hitting six times! I want seven. Whoa! What? So, brother! Brother! I need more percentage! If I keep doing these challenges, I'm gonna have I'm gonna have a heart attack at eleven. So I was a bit late. Uh, whoa. That's di I'm gonna diss your mom. I'm literally gonna hop on a diss track and flame your f mother, dude. The eight. The, the, he did the eight. He did the f eight. Didn't. Ah. I wasn't paying attention. I thought you were full balls. I f clicked. Bro, you wanna hear my impression of a f turning signal? Since why are you why is like since when do you come so early? Pause. By the wise wise, wise words of Nick A. Sussy Baka. I'm gonna call your mom. I'm gonna call your mom. Because I know her phone number. Another six! Holy sh Cause he keeps hitting for six percent! Stop! Round of applause, you fing stink, brother. Uh, the balls on this one are just absolutely fucking gargantuan. I'm using a I'm using a fucking go kart to drag my nutsack around right now. No! What? It's already ruined. I've already ruined it. I've already ruined it. I've already. I'm gonna shoot myself in the. C Can I even make it to five, please? Oh my god, bro. There we go. Technically, Five Nights at Candy's Remastered is possible to beat without cameras because we don't talk about Night Null. I clicked it, dude! F but seriously, I really enjoyed making this video. The creation of the OP strategy was really cool, and I hope you enjoyed the video as much as I did making it. If you have any recommendations for any Five Nights at Freddy's challenges, either main games or fan games, let me know in the comments below, because I'd love to see them. The next video I'm posting is absolutely insane. I beat something that I don't think anybody else in the entire world has, so you're definitely not going to want to miss it. And with all that said, thank you all so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please leave a like and consider subscribing, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.